Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the World IPv6 Day Crossover IPv6 World Asia Kickstart IPv6 Seminar. The function will soon begin. May I kindly ask you to silence your mobile phones and any other beeping devices that may disrupt the event. All guests are welcome to take one set of souvenir and participate in the lucky draw. Thank you for your attention. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Kickstart IPv6 seminar. I'm Alko, one of the youth fighters of Internet Society of Hong Kong. And I'm Celia, also one of the youth fighters. Before the start of today's event, we would like to thank Cyberport for sponsoring us this amazing place for a venue. Thank you very much. And Celia, do you know that today will be a memorial day of the Internet history? Sure, it's the World IPv6 Day. Internet big names such as Google, Yahoo, and Facebook will join hand with Internet Society for the first 24-hour test flights of IPv6. Right. And locally in Hong Kong, Internet Society of Hong Kong and Cyberport launched IPv6 World.Asia crossover World IPv6 Day campaign, which is aiming to help and not only motivate companies to prepare their services for IPv6, but also providing assistance and useful information on how to deploy IPv6 effectively and efficiently within the Asia-Pacific region. Right. Highlight of the campaign is today's Kickstart IPv6 seminar. To welcome all of you to this meaningful occasion, let us now invite Mr. Charles Mock, Chairman of the Internet Society Hong Kong and one of the hosts of this campaign to say a few words. Charles, please. Well, thank you. Today is the World IPv6 Day. And first of all, I must somewhat apologize for the, for the fact that uh, because of our time, the time that we are starting this uh, 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 event uh, at two o'clock shop in the afternoon and uh, you know a lot of you probably haven't had a chance to have a big lunch yet uh, which is good and bad because then hopefully you will be able to focus all of your attention on the exciting program that we are going to have shortly. Well first of all I want to say uh, I want to tell you what is IPv6 Day. I think most of you by now you have heard of World IPv6 Day but in fact just like many other things on the internet, it is something that has really started from the bottom up. What it, what it means is that a number of companies, a number of technologists, a number of people from the Internet Society Global, uh, they got together and, and said, why don't we create a program uh, or a day, make, make June 8th today, the World IPv6 Day, maybe the first World IPv6 Day at least, uh, that people are going to come together and share ideas and, and, and try to test drive the, world, the, the IPv6, uh, particularly with the support of a number of large uh, traffic websites and companies such as Google, Facebook, and, uh, and uh, Yahoo, and so on. So that was how it started. And in Hong Kong, when we, when we found out about it, we said, well, we got to do something. And uh, we got together with Cyberport and we said, and, and we talked and, and we decided that we're going to first of all have a conference, yet another uh, uh, large scale conference like we did before with the IPv6 World Asia uh, uh, series of events uh, that we are going to report to you what is going on, what is happening in Hong Kong and particularly in, in Asia, uh, what is happening uh, with IPv6 development. So, uh, in fact, we also did a little survey uh, that uh, had, was just finished a few days ago about people's awareness in Hong Kong about IPv6. And what I can tell you is that, well, at least from what I, we found out, the awareness is actually pretty high. We have over 90% of the people who responded saying that they have, at least they have heard of IPv6. And in fact, many, many of them, 88% say, uh, said that they know that IPv4 addresses are running out. 
but actually, a smaller percentage, only 33% of them, said that uh, they are aware that IPv6 can provide better security and faster uh, speed for the internet. Now, these are the th kind of things that I think we need to get the word out and make sure that more people are aware of the urgency as well as the advantages of going to IPv6. So uh, actually, I, uh, I, ISOC, Internet Society, has been promoting IPv6 for quite a number of years. We started doing training with our partner, uh, APNIC, Asia Pacific Network Information Center, uh, since uh, 2007. And we have since uh, trained over 300 engineers uh, to introduce them to the world of IPv6. And, and, uh, and many of them actually are now running networks all around Hong Kong and servers all around Hong Kong uh, on IPv6 and helping us to promote uh, th this uh, migration. And uh, we also set up an IPv6 directory, which is uh, ipv6world.asia, uh, that you can all actually go on and find out which websites in Hong Kong are running IPv6 currency. And in fact, you can find that most of those websites are from our government, which is uh, the final thing that I want to say is that, you know, while we are trying to say we need to catch up, we need to migrate to IPv6, in fact, the government in Hong Kong is playing a leading role in this, uh, in, uh, in this, in driving toward that direction. In fact, the government of Hong Kong among, I mean, I've talked to many other uh, uh, fellow Asian countries and their, uh, our internet society counterparts and so on. I have to say that uh, the kind of support and the kind of uh, uh, self-initiative in, in making sure that uh, the government itself is uh, not just aware, but actually running IPv6, actually we're doing quite well in Hong Kong. And we just need to get this out to the service, com uh, service provider community, get it out to the user community, and get it out to the vendor community, because uh, of course, uh, we, we all have to also make sure that our, our equipment support IPv6. So without further ado, I just want to uh, say a word of thank you to all our uh, co-hosts. Uh, of course, uh, our, 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 our our, host, our host, hosting partner, Cyberport, of, of course, for bringing us uh, this venue and all the, all, the, uh, all the nice things that go along with it. And, uh, I, and of course, thank all our uh, 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 speakers coming up, especially uh, Guo Wei from Taiwan and uh, Jeff from Australia coming all the way uh, for specifically for our event today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charles. And may we now invite Ms. Joyce Mo, Assistant Government Chief Information Officer, Digital Economy Facilitation of OGCIO of HKSAR Government. Okay, um, Mr. Houston, Charles, Herman, um, it's better to use the mic stand. Thank you. Um, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to join you all this afternoon, and thank you for inviting me to speak before such a great audience. The government fully recognizes the importance of raising awareness and encouraging the deployment of IPv6. As the depletion of IPv4 and the deployment of IPv6 affect all stakeholders, including the private sector, the public sector, the research community, and society at large. E-services are becoming an increasingly important means for the government to interact with the public. In this Web 2.0 era, e-services cover different channels, such as smartphones and other mobile internet devices. And uses of e-services are not limited by geographical region. In fact, some uses may come from different parts of the world, including those areas that were allocated IPv6 addresses only, when we all knew that IPv4 addresses were near to exhaustion. Hence, support for IPv6 is important for the digital economy to continue to flourish, especially in Hong Kong. In this regard, the government has adopted a three-pronged approach, namely raising awareness, leading by example, and government as IPv6 user. First, raising awareness. Adoption of IPv6 was covered in the Digital 21 strategy. Theme pages 
on IPv6 information, resources and deployment have also been set up on the government website for public reference. For government users, we have arranged activities such as online discussion forums, sharing of reference information, and experience sharing sections on IPv6. Facilitations of IPv6 deployment has also been provided to industry, full support for and participation in IPv6 activities within Hong Kong and in international forums. Second, leading by example. Within the government, we have also done a lot of work to enhance our readiness for the use of IPv6. The government has enabled V6 support in its core internet infrastructure. This means the public can access the IPv6 ready in government websites and exchange internet emails with the government using that standard. To further promote general awareness of IPv6 and to demonstrate the government's support for V6, we have also obtained the IPv6 enable website logo from the IPv6 forum and display it on the government one-stop portal as well as the other relevant government websites. Third, government as an IPv6 user. To promote the development of more IPv6 products and services in the IT industry, the government is also encouraging the adoption of v6 through its procurement of computer equipment and services. For example, the latest products in our standing offer agreement are capable of supporting IPv6. In enhancing public services, the government is also planning to support both v4 and v6 in the next generation government Wi-Fi program. IPv6 will bring about new business opportunities, in particular in mainland China and nearby economies. As of December last year, the internet population of the mainland was 457 million, an increase of 73 million compared with 2009. With this rapid growth in mainland's internet population and the extortion of V4 addresses, the deployment of V6 in the mainland is inevitable and imminent. This is reflected in the National 12 5 year plan, where the next generation internet and the internet of things are focused areas. The mainland has also built the world's largest IPv6 backbone and is one of the first economies to adopt a large-scale IPv6 commercial network. Hence, it is expected the speed and scope of IPv6 deployment in mainland China will be fast and wide. We would therefore prepare ourselves for business opportunities for the related product and services. Therefore, we encourage enterprises to review the business case for IPv6 and to plan for the deployment of IPv6 early so as not to left behind. Early planning, hardware and software upgrades, and training of support staff will be required well before the actual implementation. On these areas, the speakers today will be able to provide very good reference information for us all. In closing, I would like to thank the Internet Society Hong Kong and Cyberport for organizing this seminar and bringing experts from APLEC, ICANN, industry players, and ISPs together to share their experience in IPv6 deployment. I hope you will find this seminar fruitful in the knowledge that opportunities are only for people who are well prepared. Let's get started. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Next, let's invite Mr. Herman Lam, CEO of Cyberport and also one of the hosts of this campaign. Herman, please. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you Joyce and, uh, and Charles and all the distinguished guests. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Cyberport. And particularly, I think it's uh, important to welcome you to this very uh, important and meaningful event. Just now, the MC, Charles and Joyce, they all thank Cyberport for uh, hosting this event. I need to uh, declare the interest here, because uh, driving the development of IT particularly related to IPv6 is in our DNA, is our responsibility. So there's no need to thank us. This is what we should be doing. 
And um, I must also congratulate uh, in Internet Society and all the co-hosts of uh, the Internet community that we have in Hong Kong for achieving 90% plus of, uh, of awareness of IPv6 in Hong Kong. Uh, after all, we all know that IPv6 is very important, but it's not as close as sexy to uh, things like iCloud or uh, Windows 8, right? So achieving 90% awareness is a somewhat difficult job, so uh, a job well done to all of them. <laughs> Congratulations. When it comes to IPv6, uh, uh, IPv6 is not a stranger to uh, Cyberport. We have a long history in uh, working uh, on this IPv6 issues. Uh, we were the first uh, commercial sites in Hong Kong to provide native IT IPv6 network connections to all the tenants back in year 2006. Actually, one year before that, uh, we already started in year 2005, we already started testing the IPv6 and we have also provided the same capability to our tenants to test the same thing. So I, think, I guess it's something important for all the um, uh, internet community, application develop, developers, community here at Cyberport to have that capability early. Um, and throughout the years, we have uh, worked with, uh, very closely with uh, Internet Society in many, many occasions to provide trainings and also awareness seminars, sessions to uh, all, of, all the, all the uh, uh, participants here in Hong Kong. So it's very good to see the awareness that we have today. And uh, I look at the uh, great turnout today uh, in today's event. There's a strong evidence that uh, uh, we are taking this uh, matter very seriously. The importance of uh, IPv6 in our mind is that, uh, we, we, you know, internet is changing very fast. And uh, we, we are moving into, you know, from Web 2.0, we are moving into something called Web 3.0. There are many elements to that. One important element of that in our definition is the uh, internet of things. So uh, you will notice, you know, from mobile phone, now you have a lot more, everybody is carrying a few gadgets. And uh, soon you all see all, all, this, all these 3D TVs at home, they will be connecting to the internet. Uh, even this piece of paper could be HTTP somehow in the future. So having an IP address that can address the quick development uh, to address this opportunity is actually very important. Uh, so with the launch of IPv6, uh, we were able to, to enable this by increasing the IP addresses from 4 billion to uh, 340 trillion. And uh, this would definitely, definitely help to uh, uh, enable this important development of the uh, 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 web phenomenon. What's more is I, I think this web 3.0, this internet of things, particularly when it comes to Hong Kong, we are very trendy. Uh, so having this uh, opportunity for us will enable us to, to be more creative and innovative when it comes to create more business opportunities uh, on the internet world. Uh, there were, there were a, an internet report just reported earlier that Hong Kong is one of the fastest growing uh, internet society. Uh, we have a lot of the business transactions transacted over the internet and it's growing very fast. So again, I think we have the right uh, awareness. We need to have the right approach going forward. And I'm very glad today that we have such a great lineup of uh, speakers, experts from, uh, from all over the world to come to share their experiences in implementing IPv6 with us. So uh, this is a great start today, and I, I look forward to uh, having more engagement with all of you. With that, I want to thank you for joining us again, and please enjoy the events. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Herman. Um, Actually, please remain on stage. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now we would like to invite our local hosts, co-hosts of the campaign, to come to the stage for the official kick-off ceremony for World IPv6 Day crossover, IPv6 World Asia. Would the following guests please come to the stage? Ms. Joyce Mock, Mr. Charles Mock, Mr. Chi Hu Jang, Mr. Edmund Jong, and Mr. Jonathan Shear, please. In this kickoff ceremony, our guests will turn a new page of the internet development by sticking the IPv6 address onto the earth. Now, we would like to invite all our honorable guests to get ready of your tapes. And when we count to three, please place them onto the earth. So please get ready. One, 
Uh, please step a bit back. Yeah. yeah. At the back. Yeah. So ready? One, One two, two, three. three. for everyone. Thank you for kickstarting IPv6 and turning the internet to a new page. And may we now invite our overseas speakers Jeff Hostin and also Kuo Hui Wu to come onto the stage and take a photo with us. Yes, you may now be seated. So, our um, keynote speaker is Jeff Houston, chief scientist of APNIC, who is a well recognized expert of the community. Jeff would like to share the topic of why we should be worried of the IPv4 address exhaustion. Thank you and good afternoon. And, uh, thank you uh, to everyone for coming. My name's Jeff Houston and I, uh, I'm with APNIC. We're the numbers people. We're the folk who handed out all of those V4 addresses. Unfortunately, we've run out. And equally unfortunately, we haven't quite done all the necessary work for IPv6. A couple of weeks ago, a reporter asked me, you've known about this problem for 20 years. For 10 years, you've been promoting IPv6. Why do you need to promote it? If it's that important, if it's that necessary, if we have to do it, why are you promoting it? Why aren't you just doing it? Well, the sad news is, not everybody is on the same story. Not everybody is embracing V6 as quickly as we'd like. And I was trying to figure out how to illustrate to you that some parts of this industry are not quite on board with everyone else. Um, has anyone lost a USB memory stick? I found it on an aeroplane yesterday and I'd like to share the contents with you because I think it's interesting. So this is what I found on the aeroplane yesterday and it's entitled IPv6, but it's not what you think. So here's what the presentation says and for the purposes of this, you might like to uh, remember that I did spend the last 10 years of my life working for a very large telco in Australia and just think that I'm still working for them because this illustrates the view that not everyone is on the same page. Some folks still think that they can make IPv4 last forever and why they don't need to be serious about V6. So let's look at the world from the perspective of the old telephone companies, from the perspective of AT&T, from the perspective of Deutsche Telekom or France Telekom, from the perspective even of dear old Telstra in Australia. What telephone companies realised a long, long time ago was that it was nothing to do with the network. The reason why we like these things is not because we like the copper or the fibre or the bits. That's not important. What is important is the service. What is important is, from the telephone company's perspective, the ability to speak to each other. And that's why we used to pay them. Why do we like the internet? Because the protocol's good? We like the internet because it's an amazing opportunity for games, entertainment, movies, commerce, government, our lives. 
a lot of what we do every single day of the week, the internet plays a very exciting and important role. And what we see in the future is indeed an internet of things. Fridges that know when I haven't gone to the shops and I need more milk. Free, oh, devices like my car that knows when it needs a service. What generates value is not the network, it's the service. And we've known that for a long, long time. Now, prior to the internet, basically the sector that controlled everything was the telephone sector, local monopolies. This was extremely lucrative and stable. It worked. A very conservative approach to technology innovation. It took them years to roll out a new telephone, and it took them decades to roll out mobility. So this sector provided these services. From the telephone company's viewpoint, the internet was an unfortunate disease. It was a virus. It destroyed their way of doing business. Because all of a sudden, it wasn't the telephone anymore. They just treated the telephone as a way to get hold of the internet. And these annoying things called ISPs robbed us of all of our money, said the telcos. All of a sudden, these guys were reselling our service as IP and making a lot of money. And a new player entered the market that had never been there before. The new player was actually the folk who provided content. Google is not an old company. Google wasn't around 20 years ago. Neither was Amazon. All of these content folk, the Facebooks of this world, are new entrants in the market. And they're some of the richest companies on the planet today. They have come in from the telephone company's perspective as new folk and have stolen all the money. And the telephone companies want it back. The response from the telephone sector hasn't been very productive. Um, they've tried entering the ISP market with variable success. They've tried to buy everyone. <laughs> that hasn't worked. And they've even tried bundling things with triple play and quad play and everything else. By and large, it hasn't worked. Because by and large, content is king. Over the top, where well, I have a direct relationship with the Apple Store, where well, I have a direct relationship with Facebook or with Google or anyone else. It's me and Amazon. My service provider, my ISP, is not part of that picture. They don't get any of the money. They're just plumbing. They're just folk who move packets. All of a sudden, these folk find that they have a problem. Carriage is what we call a commodity. There's no money in it anymore. So the reason why this worked is that the internet is different. The internet allows anything to happen. You can dream up a new application and it can work on the internet tomorrow. All of a sudden, the network doesn't get in the way. It works over the top. However, being inventive people and appreciating that over the top worked, we still managed to break it. Most of you live behind a thing called a network address translator. It's sitting there at the entrance to your, your home. It's the thing that translates your private address space into public address space. It actually happens around the world a fair deal. And they're a problem. They're a problem because every time you want to run an application, the application needs to be a bit cleverer. It needs to try and understand what's going on with the packets and do the right thing. But despite that, over the top is still winning. Despite that, carriage providers are being squeezed. It's not a pleasant life. Despite that, Google is now one of the richest companies on the planet. So content is still winning. However, that is not going to be forever. Because something happened in April. On around the 20th of April, APNIC, the folk who provide IPv4 addresses to this part of the world, gave out its last block. There are no more. Even in Hong Kong, I'm sure more than a million smart devices a month are sold. More than a million devices that need IP addresses are sold every month. 
Where are those addresses going to come from next month? Or the month after? Or the month after that? Because we've run out. There are no more. So what's the response? Well, if you're a telephone company, if you're a carrier, you have a choice. You can do V6. However, these companies, even though they've heard about it for 20 years, have actually done very little. There are no mature V6 products. They haven't been serving it for decades or even years. It's been months at best. On the supply side, most vendors won't give you equipment that works in V6. Every part of this supply chain is being stressed. If a service provider wants to roll out V6, it's going to be a difficult and expensive problem. And as consumers, how much more are you willing to pay per month to have V6 turned on? I know I'm willing to pay nothing. I want this to happen for free. From a service provider's perspective, this is not good. But what's the alternative? Well, the alternative is that the service provider can just keep rolling in V4. And it kind of could be good. Because from a service provider's perspective, the next thing that happens to the internet is carrier-grade NATs. NATs that happen inside the network. And now, with carrier-grade NATs, the telephone companies, the carriers, have an additional point of control between you and the content you want to go to. Because it will, you will only gain access if they let them, if the carrier-grade NATs will let you through. Because these things will actually allow them to have an additional point of control. And there's no competitive disadvantage because every single carrier on the planet has the same problem within a few months. We're all running out of addresses. So there's this new element, the CGN, and they're all getting deployed very, very quickly. It turns one very limited resource, addresses, into another limited resource, ports. But those ports and the way they're being offered in carrier grade NATs is now directly under the control of the carrier. So all of a sudden it's the carrier's equipment that lets you gain access to content. And if I'm a carrier and I like Bing and I don't like Google, guess who gets more ports? Bing. I can control your experience to whoever offers me the most money because I'm the point in the middle. I'm the person who has the toll gate on the information superhighway. I can now exercise control over both users and content. And if you want more ports, if you want my systems to allow you better access, you'll have to pay me money. I'm terribly sorry, but we've run out of addresses. You'll have to pay the carrier money. This is not the internet we used to know. This is a very frightening internet of constrained services where all of a sudden control is put back in the hands of the carriers where it was never ever meant to be in the long run. And what will happen is that applications will be forced to site themselves inside the carrier's networks. Does anyone know the Akamai business model? Akamai spends a lot of time and money putting services inside other people's networks. If we don't do V6, that's the new model. Content providers no longer will have to simply make relationships with users. Content providers will have to pay a new tax, a new tax to carriers. And it won't be cheap and it won't be easy. Application services are going to move. And those that refuse to pay will no longer survive out there on the internet. Because those that don't see themselves inside the network and try to remain in the public internet will become largely invisible to you. All of a sudden, packets won't fly. This is not a future we want. This is a return to the walled garden of the early days of mobility. This is where the telcos and the carriers sit there and go, I just had to wait and it all happens. As long as I don't do V6, the future looks brilliant. 
And of course, a lot of things that are troublesome for the carriers and for the copyright industry don't work through multiple NATs. Now, I'm not going to ask you who runs BitTorrent, but I'll admit I do. I love it. It's a great protocol. It gets me lots of stuff. But I've tried to work through five layers of NATs just as an experiment, and it's ugly. It really doesn't work very, very well at all. Fascinatingly, torrents are an amazing amount of internet traffic, more than half. And with this new model of the internet that we're going to go to, if we persist in V4, you can say bye-bye to all of that because it won't work. CGNs will make that impossible. In general, every single service on tomorrow's internet is either blessed by the carrier or it isn't going to work. If you thought Microsoft had a big monopoly 10 years ago, if you thought that was a regulatory problem, if we don't do V6, we're going to build a horrendously different world populated by a number of very, very powerful monopolies. But of course, from the carrier viewpoint, you've got to do the whole strength and weakness analysis. From the carrier viewpoint, if they refuse to go to V6, what's the risk? Well, the risk is, of course, that there's no more competition because no one can enter the market. The risk is that there's going to be a regulatory backlash because no networks will be no longer neutral. And there's a risk that the regulators will start saying, you've got to do V6, it's part of your obligation. And there's a risk the content providers will, will, uh, will turn hostile on you. But the carriers do have an answer for because the carriers are likely to actually return some V4 addresses back to the pool. Why? Because it makes ports even more scarce. Oddly enough, it increases control and actually allows them to look good, but at the same time, actually increasing the elements of control over the user and the content environment. Net neutrality in the V4 only world as we move onwards will be historic. There will be no such thing as a neutral carrier in this kind of world. And as far as I can see, the efforts of the industry to tackle V6 have been more in the way of words than true effort. It is still the case that V6 has its problems. And as long as that's the case, most folk favour V4. I'll let you into a little secret. Microsoft have put out an advisory for today that if users ring up help desk saying, I'm having trouble going to www.facebook.com, you can look it up and find out what the advice is. The advice is, turn off V6 on your local machine. This is what the industry is thinking, that V6 is an option. You can just turn it off and everything will be better. And frankly, what's going on is that if you turn it off, you're giving away your future. You're giving away your future to the guys that had such trouble with it last time, the carriers who thought that telephony was good enough and no one needed this internet business. It was disruptive. It changed the world in hostile ways. They want their money back. As far as they're concerned, IPv4 can work forever because it's not the internet you knew about. The IPv4 that goes into the future offers them far more control and a much stranger world that puts them back in the box seat. Isn't it amazing what people leave on aeroplanes? Isn't it amazing that these secrets come out? Look, the internet has been built over the last 20 years and it's not simple. It's been built in an environment of deregulation, not more regulation. And all of a sudden, hundreds and hundreds of players, nobody is in charge. It's your internet as much as it's my internet. We all play a role. There is no script. When disruption happens, we often don't all pull in the same direction. It's not a dragon boat. We're not all rowing the same way. We're rowing in every possible way. And right now, we really do have a choice. Because we can do nothing. You and I can sit there and let them at what the answer is going to be. And the market is not telling you good numbers at the moment. It's not clear that the market's going to take up V6 naturally. It's not clear that the carriers, the folk who have to spend all the money and do all the work, 
see IPv6 in their interest. Some of them see quite the opposite. It's not totally clear that you and I and use, as users are committed. Here's one graph. There's only one. It's the amount of V6 in today's internet. It's one of those typical internet graphs that goes from the bottom left to the top right. And you think, well, that's encouraging. That's really good news. But you haven't seen the scale. Because this is in percentage. That's 0.1 of a percent. Not 1%, 0.1. That's 0.3%. That's 0.4%. So if you think it's good news that the amount of V6 has risen from 0.2 to 0.3%, well, that's fine. But quite frankly, I want to see this going from 80 to 90, but that's not happening. We've got a lot of work to do out there, a huge amount of work to do. So if we think that we can sit back and let other folk do the work, some of them don't want V6. Some of them see their own interests in being in IPv4 forever. So if what we really want is the last 10 years and more, an internet where you and I can have great ideas and be the next Google, and be the next Amazon, where you and I can make what we think is a good idea into reality on the internet and make a change. If we want that kind of world, then we're going to have to do some work. Because if we want innovate, innovation and creativity to flourish, if we want things like Cyberport to deliver to our own societies, to give real answers, then we need to get behind V6. We actually need to make it work today. So I hope that in looking at the dark side, in looking at what the problems are if we don't, you all feel a little bit more motivated. And when you bring out your laptop this afternoon, instead of going to open Wi-Fi, go to open Wi-Fi 6 and see what the world's going to look like tomorrow. Thank you very much.